When life emerged on our watery planet sometime between 3.5 to 4 billion years ago, Mars was also home to lakes of liquid water and possibly flowing rivers. Combined with a thick atmosphere, a magnetic field to shield against radiation, and a variety of organic molecules, Mars had favorable conditions to form and support life as we know it. Mars probably didn't remain habitable for very long, though. The red planet lost its magnetic field sometime between 3 to 4 billion years ago, which allowed the solar wind, an incessant stream of energetic particles coming from the sun to a strike and a strip of a most of the planet's atmosphere and surface water, turning Mars into the chilly desert we see today. Now many scientists from around the world have proposed the idea of terraforming, the process of creating an Earth-like or habitable environment on another planet. So let's understand what are the challenges with us to terraform the planet Mars into a habitable or Earth-like environment. Billions of years ago, Mars had a thick carbon-rich atmosphere, lakes and oceans of liquid water, and probably even white fluffy clouds. And this was at a time when our Sun was smaller and weaker, but occasionally much more violent than it is today. In other words, our solar system is a much more favorable place for life now than it was 3 billion years ago and yet Mars is red and dead. Sadly, Mars was doomed from the start. It's a smaller than Earth which means it cooled off much faster. The core of our planet is still molten and that a spinning blob of iron is go in the center of Earth powers our strong magnetic field. The magnetic field is a literal force field capable of stopping and deflecting the solar wind which is a never-ending stream of high-energy particles blasting out of the sun. When Mars cooled off, its core solidified and its magnetic force field shut off, exposing its atmosphere to the ravages of the solar wind. Over the course of 100 million or so, the solar wind completely stripped away the Martian atmosphere. When the air pressure dropped to near vacuum, the oceans on the surface boiled away and the planet dried up. The first ingredient in which life depend is temperature. The ideal temperature for life thrive on any planet is minus 15 degrees Celsius to 122 degrees Celsius. But planet Mars is very cold. The average temperature on Mars is minus 18 degrees Fahrenheit. So first we have to warm up the planet. One of the most important players in warming the Earth is carbon dioxide. However, Mars does not retain enough carbon dioxide that could practically be put back into the atmosphere to warm the Mars. The current Martian atmosphere itself consists mostly of carbon dioxide, around 95%, but it is far too thin and cold to support liquid water, an essential ingredient for life. On Mars, the pressure of the atmosphere is less than 1% of the pressure of the Earth's atmosphere, and a liquid water on the surface would very quickly evaporate or freeze. There are a few different schools of thought on how we could heat up Mars atmosphere and make it more hospitable to life. Elon Musk suggested, for example, that we could terraform Mars by exploding nuclear bombs over its polar caps. He says that the radiation wouldn't be an issue, since the explosion would be in a space over the poles, but the heat release would vaporize the frozen carbon dioxide to greenhouse warm the planet and melt the water ice. Nuking Mars raises a host of scientific, ethical, and legal questions. From a scientific perspective, researchers estimate that the resulting melted water ice could easily cover the planet to depth of a few tens of meters, but it probably wouldn't last for long. The carbon dioxide added to Mars' atmosphere by vaporizing the polar caps would only double the pressure, a far cry from the comparable pressure to Earth required for condition warm enough to sustain surface liquid water and atmospheric water vapor. Mars has more abundant sources of carbon dioxide such as those locked in the Martian soil and tightly bonded carbon in minerals. But based on 20 years of NASA and ESA satellite data, researchers estimate that even if we mine Mars' entire surface for carbon dioxide, the atmospheric pressure would still only be about 10 to 14 percent of Earth's. This would correspond to an average temperature rise of about 10 degrees Celsius, not nearly enough to sustain liquid water. To put this all into perspective, we would need more carbon dioxide to meaningfully warm up Mars than humans have released throughout our entire history on Earth. Terraforming Mars is therefore a daunting endeavor that doesn't seem possible with current technology. Breathing on Mars Another challenge is making Mars' atmosphere breathable. The MOXIE experiment on NASA Perseverance rover aims to convert carbon dioxide from Mars' atmosphere into oxygen. If it works, future human explorers could use this kind of technology to generate oxygen for their habitats. However, doing this for the entire planet may not be feasible. This is why some researchers suggest turning to forms of life 
that have already transformed Earth's atmosphere. On Earth, cyanobacteria were responsible for converting via photosynthesis our atmosphere of methane, ammonia and other gases around 2.5 billion years ago into the oxygen-rich one of today. Since Mars received less than the half the sunlight as Earth and has a global dust a storm problem that makes visibility worse. Researchers have suggested that we introduce a special micronews on Mars that photosynthesize in low light to create breathable air for humans. The main challenge of a micronews induced breathable Mars is time. NASA conducted a feasibility study in 1976 that concluded it would take at least a few thousand years for even extremely field organisms specifically adapted for the Martian environment to make a habitable atmosphere out of the red planet. Fixing the Mars magnetic field even if we somehow manage to introduce enough carbon dioxide and oxygen in the Martian atmosphere and sustain liquid water on the surface, the resulting Earth-like condition would probably be short-lived. NASA's MAVEN mission has revealed that Mars is losing its atmosphere even today. The planet's lack of a protective magnetic field means the solar wind will continue stripping its atmosphere and water, reverting our changes to Mars or constantly degrading them. To truly terraform Mars, we would need to fix its magnetic field. Will we don't have the technology to churn the core of a planet faster to revive its magnetic field? Creative solutions abound. Maybe we could build a giant electromagnet in a space to deflect away the solar wind. Maybe we could cuddle Mars with a superconductor, giving it an artificial magnetosphere. But it looks like trying to build a pyramid from desert sand. It's not possible for us to protect the atmosphere of Mars from the strong solar wind of the Sun by current technology. Low gravity and pressure. The surface gravity on Mars is 38% of that on Earth. It can only retain an atmosphere of about 0.38 bar. It is not known if this is enough to prevent the health problems associated with weightlessness. In other words, even a terraformed Mars would be very cold by Earth's standards and its air about as thin as chilly as the Himalayan mountains. Theoretically, it's possible to terraform Mars, but the ways you could do it just are not at all practical today. In short, it seems very improbable that we could transform Mars into a more Earth-like planet. In the meantime, NASA's multi-decade Mars program seeks to understand the planet's suitability to host past or present life. Near term, Martian explorers would likely live in enclosed structure on the surface or subsurface built using material from the red planet. For now, would-be terraformers will have to humbly hone their ideas on how to transform Mars into an open world.